Hi everybody, uh, Rob Hill, uh, gearing up, getting ready, getting really excited to be heading off to Everest, hopefully to complete uh, uh, the last of my seven summits bid. Right now I'm focusing mainly on just my training. Uh, I got the Great Comebacks event coming up in Washington DC uh, next week, so I'm excited about being there. And it's the 25th uh, year anniversary, so a lot of the uh, previous winners are going to be there, so that's going to be an amazing event, so excited about that. Today I sort of wanted to uh, just address some questions that I've been receiving from you know, fellow Ostomates, uh, fellow Ostomate climbers around the world. Just uh, what I go through typically, you know, I have a lot of experience, I've been on uh, obviously six other big mountains around the world, but it's many mountains and just in my travels, and uh, obviously knowledge of the local area, uh, the mountain itself, but uh, in traveling with an ostomy, you know, it can prove to be difficult. So anything you can gather is great. Uh, so I thought I'd just address some of the, the key questions I've been getting over the last little while. I don't want to discourage people from emailing me if you are an ostomate or just have questions or you're going to be doing some hiking or some climbing. Uh, please reach out. You know, if, I'm no, if I don't answer, it means I'm on a mountain somewhere. But uh, happy to hear from you and uh, form that relationship. Anything, any information I can provide I'm certainly willing to do it. One of the key things, obviously, in just being an ostomate or anybody in general is nutrition and hydration. Uh, obviously, a big issue for me. I live without my large intestine, uh, permanent ileostomy. Uh, so hydration, very, very key. This is huge in the mountains. Uh, it's really what helps you acclimatize to the environment that you're in. Uh, the rarefied air is being able to stay hydrated, so very important. What I do, obviously, uh, I drink a lot. Uh, I take or have found electrolyte drinks that work really well for me, and that is the key. Finding something that's going to really work for you when you're out hiking, doing your exercises. You know, try a different uh, range of products and figure out what works for you. The key question that I get in nutrition is output. Um, the concern, obviously, is if you're going to have to empty your bag and you're on a climb, where do you do it? I found with my body personally that when I'm extending myself in a, a huge exertion of uh, exercising, pushing myself on a climb day, my output actually seems to be quite low. Uh, I don't know if this is due to the fact that my body is demanding so much of the nutrients, so much of the hydration at that time because it's exercising so hard and just trying to draw on so much energy. So even on big days, um, I might have to empty my pouch very little. It's more about uh, when the exercise routine is over and then my output will increase. So I try to moderate that by obviously in the morning I have a big breakfast. I'll do an empty before I leave on the day. Uh, fair size lunch. Uh, typically don't have to empty my pouch at that time. And then uh, in the evening I usually do a lighter meal. So in the tent environment obviously uh, you know, the ice and the snow, you don't want to have to get outside the tent that often. Uh, in, say, a lot of European climbing where there's a hut, you know, that is probably less of an issue. But typically for me, I try to leave my evening meal a little bit lower. I also uh, take a lot of hard candies and nuts. Whatever works for you, to just munch on throughout the day, kind of keep uh, the energy level up, something that you're just burning constantly. Say in the middle of a, a really long day, like a summit day, which can be up to 20 hours long or longer or even just a 12 hour day. What I typically do is, um, for me personally, I wear a closed end pouch. It avoids any accidental clips coming uncovered, snagging in in a harness when you're taking it off and on, any little extra issues. Uh, so what I do is say on a really busy climb day, and I know I'm going to uh, have to do a post change, I have my closed end, I have a, a two or three new bags. I will carry them in a number of different Ziplocs and what I do is I take my old pouch off, I throw it in the Ziploc the new bag came out of, put the new pouch on and then zip up the Ziploc and I put this in my backpack. Uh, you know, For me personally and hopefully for everyone out there you practice, you, know, you take it in, you take it out. Uh, clean climbing, obviously we want to leave the environment clean. I certainly don't want to be leaving anything like a a full ostomy pouch around. So I'll just throw it in the Ziploc, zip it up, and put it in my pack. And when I get to camp or get to back down, I dispose of it. It's uh, what I found is one of the, the best and easiest ways just to cope with uh, the waste issue. And it's a quick change. 
it works really well for me. I often get asked, and I think uh, at times the question is um, you know, more of a concern. Uh, how do you handle going to the washroom uh, on the mount? Uh, to me, I think living with ostomy is actually a positive in this direction. Uh, if I have to do, a, I have to use the washroom, we'll have set up or dug out a little washroom type facility where we have a bucket that's lined that we can utilize so we're packing the garbage out. And uh, for me, I just have to pull the pouch off, empty it into there, and put it back on. I don't have to expose my skin in freezing cold temperatures. You know, and when the, my climbing partners have to go to the tent, it becomes a big, huge ordeal. Or if we're on a, a rock climb, they gotta take their harness off pretty much, you know, expose themselves to danger as well as the elements. And I don't have to do that. I just, it's right there on my waist, pull it off, empty, put it back on, and head on with my day. So uh, one of the benefits to having an ostomy is Obviously, it cuts down on uh, uh, exposure to the elements in these freezing cold temperatures, which is a bonus.